Previously on Water Rats. Okay. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Yeah. One step in the right direction and then you got yourself a future. One step in the wrong direction and then you land in the ship. What's with Riley? Got a soft spot for this kid or something? Oh, you know, just someone who's got a bat for the underdog. I won't have to shoot you, man. Nobody's shooting anybody. Never believed in me, Mick. Oh, You're going to be here any second, OK? The next time someone decides to use you as target practice, you bring them down. No. Come on, Mickey. Don't you go breaking those crutches on me. And leave the grapes alone, Alex. You bought them for me. No, you're getting fat. Uh. So when are they releasing you? Discharge. You get released from prison. Yeah, whatever. When? I don't know. Next week, next month, next year. Whenever the bloody nurse ratchet lets me go. If you're referring to me, Mr Riley, you'll be discharged when the doctor and I think you're ready and not before. Uh, Detective Alex Sinclair, Sister Dobinson. G'day. So when you two are finished with whatever it is you've been up to... I was just having a chat. ...you might remove yourself from the bed before you totally destroy the hydraulics. Sorry. Where's your wheelchair? I don't know where it is. It was here this afternoon. Well, you'll have to find it tomorrow, because now it's time for bed. Oh, come on, sister, it's early. It's half past eight, way past visiting hours. Yeah, look, I'm out of here. See you, Mick. See you, Alex. Now, you might remove those pants so I can take a look at the wound. What's Riley still doing here? Right? Slacking off? You know? <laughs> well, you know what? Oh, um, don't worry about it. I know. What? No, nothing. Don't worry about it. Promise you're not going to say anything. I promise? Yeah, no. I think he's having it off with the head nurse. It's all yours. Body snatching, eh? I thought it went out with Burke and Hare. With what? Burke and Hare. A couple of 19th century grave robbers. Oh. Someone's been using their M.O. I'd say the body's been recently exhumed, probably about 12 hours ago. Uh, deceased about six months ago. He's pretty well preserved for six months, Chop. It's not that unusual. There's traces of dry sand on the clothing and on the wheelchair. In a dry environment like that, there's very little decomposition of the body fats and skin. It's partly mummified. Mm. 
Fascinating shop, but what's it doing here? I have a clue. Riley provided the getaway vehicle. What? Are you sure you can't identify the body, Mrs. Tully? I have never seen him before. Never. Yes, you have, Mary. Well, it's him like you wanted. Well, she was really missing him. She told me she... She has their wedding photo in her room right next to her bed and she kisses him goodnight every night. Jason, what are you saying? What are you going on about, Jason? Oh, well, it's him. Lloyd, Mary's husband. Oh, I brought him back for her. Jason! Somebody mind telling me who this is? Oh, I'm Jason. I'm the gardener. That, that's how I dug him up so easy, cos I got all the tools, shovels and stuff. I feel my hands. I got calluses. It didn't take me very long. You dug up Mary's husband? No, no, it, it isn't my husband. Lloyd is a very tall man. It, it isn't him. It, it, it isn't him. Uh, it doesn't look anything like him. Did I dig up the wrong body? Well, I better go put this one back then. It's a sandwich sort of a picnic. Oh, yeah. oh, I should put him back, eh? Oh, no, 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 Jason, that's OK. We can fix it. Mary doesn't want him, does she? No, no, probably not in that condition, no. Jason, how come you uh, got the wrong grave here? Oh, no, it's the right grave, all right, look. Yep. Lloyd Francis Tully. See, I told you it was the right grave. Yeah. You take your time now, Mary, OK? It was all so sudden. His heart. He, he'd always looked after himself. He'd, he'd never smoked. And he walked every day. And then... this massive heart attack. I suppose I... I should have recognised the suit. Lloyd always looks so, so nice in the blue pinstripe suit and the tie. I picked it out for him to be buried in, but he looks so different. I never expected him to look like that. I think that's all, Mary. Look, we'll make sure that things are put back, um, put right. Okay? Yeah. I saw the little beggar in the security mirror grabbing everything he could lay his hands on. What, you just chased him down here? Yeah, then he disappeared over the edge. There he is. Yeah, all right, to go. <laughs> hey, it's slippery down there. Yeah, don't worry. Constable Quinn has a knack of getting out of slippery places, yeah? <laughs> Hi. Not bad down here, eh? You wouldn't happen to have a fishing line in that bag of yours, would you? How you going, Matt? So the only problem is the tide will come in. And if you can't swim... I can swim, jerk. Just can't get my bag wet, OK? Well, I guess the only way's up. Let's go. It's slippery here. All right, you can jump on my back. Just don't strangle me, OK? What are you going to do with all this? Huh? OK, we're going to have to go and talk to your mum and dad then. Where do you live? No way. <laughs> Why is this never easy? How about a ride in a boat? Have you ever been on a boat before? Ow! Hey! Yeah, I'm all hey. Oh. Oh. OK, I think we've had enough of that for one day. Let's go. <sighs> OK, this guy should be put back in his hole where he belongs. Well, an autopsy's routine under these circumstances. Riley got you guys involved. Talk to him. Yeah, all right. Yeah, he should have got the bloody locals in. He's got too much time in his hands, that boy, that's for sure. Look, you might tell him while you're talking to him there's no evidence of an infarction. A what? Heart attack. No, yeah, yeah, I know that, but his wife said he died of one. No evidence of it. What we got here is a man, 40 to 45, heart in passable condition, the liver of an alcoholic. What are you saying, cirrhosis? 
Yeah, advanced. There are other signs of alcohol abuse, esophageal varices. So the, so the drink killed him? No, death was caused by a fractured skull and a result of cerebral bleeding. Don't tell me. Blind object. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, or a bad fall. Then there's the teeth. We've got Lloyd Tully's dental x-rays. Those are not Lloyd Tully's teeth, so... So, this isn't Lloyd Tully's body. It's not possible. The dental records didn't match, and the guy found in Lloyd's grave was an alcoholic. Um, but Lloyd didn't drink at all. Well, hardly at all. I don't understand. What, what has happened to my, my husband's body? Where is he? That's what we're trying to sort out, Mary. It's all some, some horrible mix-up. We can sort this stuff out, Mary. We just need to know a little bit more. I never thought I'd meet anyone. And then Lloyd came along. He was an accountant with a, with a small clientele. Doesn't sound very romantic. He was. He was really romantic. When Walter told me that he died, it was as if my whole life just stopped. Oh. How, how could this, how could this happen? Oh, Mary, who's Walter? Lloyd's brother in Brisbane. He took care of everything for me. I sent him the suit, but he, he took care of everything. So your husband died in Brisbane? Oh, Walter was wonderful. He took care of all the formalities. He had Lloyd's body flown home to Sydney for me. And you never actually saw the body? Well, Walter convinced me it was best to remember Lloyd as he was, rather than... than dead. <laughs> Mary, is there any way that we may be able to get in contact with Walter? Oh, I don't think it's possible. He left on a trip through India last month. OK, Mary, thanks very much. We'll be in touch. Oh, Mr Christie. Jason, he may not be very bright, but I, I don't think he meant any harm. Yeah, I think uh, Mary's worried that Jason may be charged, Jack. What do you think? I don't know, Mary. He's my first grave robber. <laughs> Tell me your name. No. Why not? Come on. Please. His name's Jackass. Are you sure? Well, you what? kicked like one. I got you. Well, not really. Your toes were pointed. So? Well, you could break them. Plus, your kick lacks power, thankfully. <laughs> How should I kick? Well, what you do is you stand. What's your name? Gus. Gus, right, I guess. You stand like this, and you hold your foot flat like that. See? Want a pie, Gus? No, thanks. My name's Matthew. Named after my dad, Matthew Quinn. What about yourself? I'm going to check this in person, see if there are any gusses on there. But meanwhile, this nice docks lady's going to take care of you until we find your parents. You're going to have to come with me right now. I need my medicine back. Oh, not right now, mate. We'll get it back to you later, OK? Nice bag, that's a billum from New Guinea. Very nice. All right, so what have we got? Lip balm, Dettol, Disprin. It's not exactly a drug haul, is it? No. So what would a kid want with all this stuff? We're the Sydney Water Police, right? The Sydney Water Police, the greeny, bluey-looking stuff out there, like yeah. if it's not wet, it's not ours. Pass it on, St Clair. Yeah, yeah, my thoughts exactly. I'm Thank on you, to Jack. the Brisbane cops right now. St Clair. Yeah, I will. I will. I will pass it on as soon as I check the death certificate. Hey, am I talking to anybody around here? Is anybody listening? Hello? I've just checked with fingerprints. There's no match for your corpse. Not uh, in New South Wales, anyway. Oh, but Helen, can you please try Queensland? Hello? Yes. Hello? I'm, Is I'm anybody still here? No, I'm, still here. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I'm talking. What? Is anybody there? What, what, what? No. No, Helen, I didn't say a word. Nothing. 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 You are kidding. Thank you. 
OK, the doctor that signed Lloyd Tully's death certificate went to water when the Brisbane locals called by, right? He has admitted to signing the death certificate without knowing the cause of death or without knowing the identity. And not without making a little extra money too, I'd say. Brisbane cops are charging him now. They could be looking at murder. Gav, that bag thing you had, um, what did Helen call? Um, it's a billum, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, from New Guinea, she said. Yeah. Yeah, what do you reckon? That boat's from New Guinea? Yeah, go grab the fenders and lines and we'll have a look, huh? Hello, anyone there? Sydney Water Police, is anyone around? <laughs> Gab, did you hear that? No one. Someone below. Oh, God. Blanket, cuss, please. Get an ambulance, Matt. She's burning up. Blanket. Gas. Where's Gas? You're going to be all right. Gas. You're all right. You're going to be all right. You're looking for Mary Tully? She's having a treatment or something. I've been waiting for her to get back. Are you a relative? Afraid not, no. I'm a specialist. I thought my specialist was taking care of her. My field's endocrinology. Can't wait any longer. Yeah, sure, Doc. So what's the name? Tell her I'll see her later. Gentlemen. That explains why Gus stole that stuff from the chemist. Yeah, but why didn't he just tell us that his mum was sick? I don't know. He's trying to hide. Maybe we should um, have a look around and see what we can find, huh? What are we looking for? Here we go, Gav. Logbook. Log of MV Tok Tok. Registered Port Moresby, New Guinea. Owners Brian and Elaine Martin. Right. Last entry was in. That's funny. Why, right, what's that? Well, up until a month ago, they kept a log of every voyage, repairs, refuelling dates and places. They leave New Guinea and there's no more mention of Brian Martin. Only Elaine and Gus. Then a month ago, it just stopped. Well, if she was saying this was just the kid, then she would have had her hands full. No time to write in that. Yeah, well, what happened to Dad? Good question. Hey, what do you got? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I remember that smell from Hawker's office. The smell of authority. It's fish food, mate. Enough for hundreds of little buggers. Mm. We better start looking around. Now that we know what we're looking for. Hey, Gav. Goldfish. Now they're tropicals. What have you done with my mum? What are you doing here? Where's my mum? She's got to have her medicine. Do you know any reason why Lloyd would fake his own death? No. <laughs> no, he, he, he wouldn't do that to me. Was he in trouble financially? Was he a gambler? <laughs> I mean, how was his business? Was it doing OK? Well, he had his offices at home, but... He never talked about his work. We weren't rich, but we were comfortable. Mary, we're going to need permission to search through Lord's records. We're going to need the house key. You really think it's alive, don't you? Your endocrinologist came to see you today. What's an endocrinologist? Endocrinologist? I don't know. Can we borrow that photo? What's this about having to get a photo dusted for oh, Prince? I don't know, what something about Mary not having an endocrinologist? Endocrinologist? Yeah. yeah that's a big word. 
Do you reckon Riley's just had too long in this hospital? Oh, you bet. Riley's always been off the air. You know, if I was a successful accountant, I'd be getting the house upgraded a bit. Oh, no, well, not if I was trying to hide my newfound wealth. It looks like a tax dodge to me. Oh. She's a nice and elaborate tax dodge, Jack. A few more of these and we'll be able to spark up a seafood barbie, eh, boss? Can you take those to the diver's area, please, Gary? On 50 bottles. Oh, this is about a fish tank. Uh, raw materials for a barbecue, apparently. Oh. My God. You know what that is, Helen? What? That is a tropical Saratoga. Oh, they're beautiful. What I wouldn't give for one of these. They're worth a couple hundred bucks each. Oh, well. Call customs. They're a prohibited import. Ah, oh, tropical Saratoga. Donna, do you mind getting that dust prints for me, thanks? Listen, did you know the Tully place had been robbed before? The day of Lloyd's funeral. Yeah? The only thing they took was a computer. Maybe that's all they wanted. Exactly. And on another matter, they've found Walter roaming through India, happy as Larry. Uh, the feds have got him. They're bringing him back. He'll be charged with falsely declaring a death. Would you like that? Thank yeah, you, well, Helen. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, that's right. We have that Hey, hey, this little bloke. He just bolted from the doc's car at the traffic lights trying to get back to the yacht. Where's the mother? She's in hospital. She's got malaria. Anyway, they're going to let us know when she's able to talk to us. Oh, listen, I've got the barn to get on, sir. If you want to bring the Chardonnay, we should be right in. Don't you listen. OK, there are four... No, five, actually. Five sets of prints on that photo. And the odd ones out belong to one Hugh Costello. Oh, right. millionaire yeah, high yeah, roller. Yeah, yeah. Listen yeah. to this. He's got three charges of obtained benefit by deception against his name, for which he had no convictions. Also, three charges of money laundering. No convictions there either. Well, here we go. Lloyd Tully was his accountant. Yeah, smells of blackmail to me. Oh, you reckon? Oh, this Hugh Costello. He doesn't sound like somebody's going to cop that sort of thing. No, but it would explain why Lloyd Tully, accountant and blackmailer, would want to fake his own death. He wouldn't want Costello anywhere near him. Yeah, that's right. So, Lloyd hits the headlines. Costello figures he's still alive, comes looking for him. Right, well, ahead of half a dozen companies, shouldn't be too hard to find. We get him in. What are you going to charge him with, Jack? What? Visiting know. after hours? <laughs> Personating an endocrinologist. That'll do, yeah, mate. Come on, Jeff. It's a big one. Yeah, give it a run. OK. Do it. First duty of a good corporate citizen, assist the forces of law and order. And this will be a first for you. <laughs> That's quite a sense of humour you got there, Mr Christie. I didn't think I was being funny. Mr Costello, we really appreciate you coming in, but we are quite concerned about your accountant, Lloyd Tully. I don't think you have to be worried about Lloyd, Detective. You see, he's been dead for the past six months. Oh, by now, he'd be enjoying the pleasures of the Celestial Institute of Chartered Accountants. Balancing up his new wings, counting the harps. <laughs> Unless he's in the other place, shoveling the coal. I think what you're shoveling comes from the wrong end of a male cow. Now, we're inclined to think Mr Tully is still shuffling around this mortal coil. Yeah, I can't tell you how glad it makes me to think that he might still be alive. Really make me happy to see old Lloyd again. Mr Costello, what were you doing in Mary Tully's room at the rehab centre? When was that exactly? That was exactly when you left your fingerprints on her wedding photo. Visiting the widow of an old friend. I found that photo quite touching, didn't you? And why did you try to pass yourself off as her endocrinologist? What was that about? Humour, Mr Christie. I'm sorry I couldn't help you any more, detectives. Now, if you see old Lloyd before I do, you tell him I'm really looking forward to catching her. Good. With humour. It's real good. Where are you taking me? Um, you're going the wrong way. Hey, what are you 
Jason. What are you doing with me? Jason, Mary? help me. What are you doing? No. I, no, Jason. I found you. Somebody help me, please. Help. Help, help me. No. Help. Hey, stop. Please. No. Riley, there's been nothing but trouble ever since you got here. The sooner you're discharged, the better for all of us. Oh, you'll miss me, sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Looking after you, right? So what do you got, Mick? What was it? It was a, uh, a late model grey hole in Calais and you didn't get the rego number. No, I didn't. Oh, that's a pity. Might have saved us a lot of work. You know, might have helped Mary Tully, too. Jack, I was hobbling after them with my crutches, OK? What did you have a go? So what were you doing with this? What, you throwing it like a spear, were you? You're trying to hit the tyre. I'll hit you with it in a minute. I was frustrated, OK? Oh, tell me. I oh, will look, piss off, OK? Just leave me alone. All right, I will come back and see him visit now. You want any grapes or anything? Don't even bother. Are you telling me that anyone could just drive in here, put a white coat on, and then just kidnap anybody? Is that what you're telling me, sister? We are, in case you hadn't noticed, a rehabilitation centre, not the Commonwealth Mint. We've never experienced a kidnapping. Mary Tully was our first, and God, I hope we get her back. Oh, I heard what you said. He's got Mary. Sister Dobinson, meet the late Lloyd Tully. Come back to put some flowers on your own grave, Mr Tully. I'm sorry about that. About the grave, about everything. Oh, you're sorry. Well, that's good. What about the bloke that's in your grave? Bet he's sorry too. I mean, what'd you hit him with? Fair old crack in the back of his head. No, it was a fall. I, I wasn't even there. You see, there was this doctor. The one that helped you fake a death certificate? And uh, he knew this undertaker who had a body. So you, so you pay the doctor, who then pays the undertaker, right? And then you guys get together, give this body a nice new name, nice, nice new burial. Oh, and then your wife, she comes back and she cries over this body. I had to, don't you see? Hugh Costello, he was after me. Hugh Costello, the pillar of the business community. Yeah, on the surface, he's a businessman, but it's all dirty money underneath. His trucks. Oh, that's right. Yeah. People smuggling. He he brings people in from Indonesia and China, Iraq. Anyone who wants to start a new life. Anyone who's prepared to pay through the nose for it. And of course, you're his accountant, so you keep all the records. Yeah, well, I, I was responsible for making sure that everybody got what they agreed on. So a nice little earner for you too, yeah? I started to realise that some of the people, they, they weren't turning up. When the boats were intercepted by the Navy, they, well, like they, just, they just disappeared. Not disappear, right? So you decided you'd blackmail Costello? No, listen, you, you don't understand. See, I, I made copies of all the details onto two floppy disks. Right, I sent one to Costello, and I kept one duplicate myself. And I warned Costello that if he didn't stop the people smuggling, that I would send one to the police. Yeah, I can't speak for Detective Sinclair, but I think this is a whole crock of shit, right? Even if it was true, this is the dumbest idea I've ever heard. What did you think Costello was going to do, eh? Huh? You think he'd roll over and play good boy? OK, let, let's say I'm not as cynical as Detective Christie. What, what, what was his response to your threat? He sent a wreath. A wreath? Red roses, like dozens of them. And there was a silk sash with the words in loving memory of Mary Louise Tully. Yeah, pretty clear message. That's, see, that's where I got the idea from the wreath. To fake your own death. It was the only thing I could do for Mary. I love her, Detective Sinclair. What are you saying? What, what are you saying? I said I love her. Yeah, well, you've got a lovely way of showing no, look, OK, it's pretty clear that Costello is, is, has taken Mary to flush you out. So where are the floppy disks? True love's beautiful. A delivery for you, Mr. Tully. 
Oh God. Okay, Lloyd, we'll swap. You bring me the disc, I'll bring Mary. Carlos Cafe on the wharf. We'll be watching for you. You got today only. I hope you kept that phony grave. If you don't turn up, Mary can use it. He'll kill her. Listen, mate, he might be planning to kill you both. I'll give him the disc. But you and Mary can give evidence against him. He's got no alternative. Neither do I. Three weeks ago, Elaine Martin's husband was jailed in Papua New Guinea for illegal possession of a traditional hand tool. He was trying to smuggle it out of the country. Big deal. A hand tool. Yeah, well, that's what I thought, but it comes with a price tag of between $150,000 to $200,000. Oh, you're kidding me. That's what it says. <laughs> Meanwhile, the PNG government have issued Elaine Martin with a red notice. Red notice? What's that? You should know that. There's a warrant out for her arrest. She'll be extradited to stand trial, and if she's found guilty, she's likely to spend up to three years in a New Guinea prison. Come on, Sarge, that's a bit rough now, isn't well, it? Well, the feds are onto it now, Gav. It's not our problem. Not our problem. But what about Gus? How do you think he'll feel about that? We sell Tok Tok up the Sepik about a year ago. Brian and I got malaria. Gus was lucky, thank God. And this was on one of your collecting trips, was it? Don't think too badly of us, Constable. Just fishes to us. What about the authentic tool? I saw you at first, I had no idea what it was worth. It just looked like any other tomahawk we saw around the villages. Why'd you pick that particular one? Because we got greedy. Tok Tok is full of Teredo. Might last, I don't know, a year, year and a half before it finally falls apart. Brian had this dream, hmm? didn't he? Sail around the Pacific, through the Panama Canal. The tomahawk, stupid piece of stone and twine. It was worth the price of a new yacht. Certainly not worth the price we're paying now. Brian locked up in that hell hole. Now they want to take me back. Can you imagine it? Can you imagine what it's going to be like for a woman? Yeah, well, we're sorry about that, Mrs. Martin. What about Gus? <sighs> He's got an uncle on a property near Yes. A brother-in-law. He can stay with him and his family. <laughs> Do we get back? I'm so sorry, sweetheart. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gus. I'm really sorry. I hate you. I'll look after your phone for you. Alex, Tully's getting on a harbour taxi. OK, thanks, Mobile 2. We heard loud and clear. Yeah, they're under the harbour bridge heading north. What's your follow? But I'll head straight back to the Nemesis. Nemesis to pick us up at Rose Bay. Tully's looking for 
for someone at Watson's Bay Wharf. Step aboard, Mr. Tully. Have you heard anything about Mary yet? No? Huh? Well, listen, Helen, if you hear anything, can you give me a call straight away, please? Yeah. Thank you. Come on, let's get going. Gonna let it go? Not yet, Lloyd. I underestimated you once before. I'm not inclined to do it again. <laughs> Let's just see if you've brought the right floppy disk first. Then we'll discuss the next step. Give it to Bill here. He's no computer nerd, but he knows how to load a floppy disk. Man, Lloyd. Mary will be proud of you. Let it go. Well, I don't know, Lloyd. You see, I've got a bit of a problem. There could be other discs. No. No, I swear to you. With your hand on your cash book? Yeah, well, I really can't afford to take the risk. So why don't you step over there and join hands with your dearly beloved? I'm sure we've got enough chain for two. <laughs> After all, you're already dead. I read it in the paper. Do it, Tully. You're going over anyway. You wouldn't want to watch Mary go first, now would you? I'm sorry, darling. I'm sorry for everything. Oh. What a brave little accountant you are, Lloyd. I'm impressed. <laughs> Get us out of here! Stay on the harbour, Mr. Costello. This is what you came for, Christy. I suppose it doesn't matter much anymore. There you go. With my compliments. Damn. Clumsy of me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I had a couple of your mates here a little earlier. Oh, yeah. Must be getting careless. Seem to have misplaced them. Oh, we can help you out there. Just think what you'll save on raids. They'll have to take into account what I did to expose Costello. Isn't that right? 
Lloyd, mate, you're up for more charges than a light brigade. Now, let's see, what have we got? We've got aiding and abetting people smuggling, and you've got money laundering and receiving, and then there's, you know, charges related to you faking your own death. I mean, I don't even know that's a half of it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's know. all right, mate. You'll get your day in court. Alex, do you want to make sure Mary yeah, gets yeah, back yeah, to the rehab centre? Thanks. C -c can I have a moment with Lloyd, please? I could be in jail for a long time, love. Oh, Lloyd. You'd be pretty sad leaving this place, wouldn't you, Mick? <laughs> I don't ever want to see this place again. But what about your little mercy, friend? <laughs> I mean, a woman can't get what she's given hey, you. Hey, you know? What? Without some sort of commitment. Mick! Mr. Riley, your follow-up appointment. Look after that leg, eh? Yeah, I will, Ruth. <laughs> Thanks, Ruth. Bye. See you soon. I thought the nurse thing was a joke. Yeah, I made it up. What? Nothing. Nothing.